It doesn't have to be hard to learn a new software. And that's why I wanted to share 30 tips on how to use D5 Render, going over things like user interface, assets, materials, rendering, and bonus features, all in under 15 minutes, because it doesn't have to take hours to do this. So let's get right into it, starting with mobility. There's three main ways that you can move around in D5 Render, and the first is orbit. And essentially, whenever you right click, you're able to zoom around a central point in the model. Another way you can move is flight. And this allows you to use the WASD keys to move left to right, back and forth, and then Q and E to go up and down. But you can adjust the speed if you feel like you're moving too slow, or if you're going too fast, you can also tone it down. But you can also walk, and so this gives you more of an eye level perspective. And you can raise the eye level depending on the height that you're looking for. But you can really fly going all the way up to 200 speed, but I don't recommend that unless you have a super large model and you can get lost. But if you do get lost, that brings us to tip number two, which allows you to focus. And all you have to do is click on an object and press Z. So I went down into the object toolbar, right clicked, and then clicked focus on. And so if you ever get super far away from your model, that's a key tip to know, so you can get right back to it without having to fly around. Number three, dynamic modes. There's four different options that you can change your model to. There's the original lighting, then you can also do wireframe, which allows you to see the meshes within the model. You can also select the clay mode, which takes away all the materials, but can be great for diagrams and just very simple renderings. And then you can also toggle between still and dynamic modes, which allow you to see the sky moving and the trees moving when it's dynamic, but sometimes that slows down the speed of D5 render. This will lead us into number four, which is model quality. You can toggle between F1, which turns the model quality to high, and F2, which toggles the model quality to medium if you want things to run faster when you're just placing assets and materials. Now let's go over some material tips. Number five is layers, and this is something that can get super crazy if you don't get on top of it early on. And on the right hand side, you have the ability to create different layers. So as you see, I turned a lot of these layers off that I'm not using in the moment because they can slow down the computer, especially as you see, I just turned on a ton of trees. And if you don't have that on, it makes things a lot easier. So within those layers, you can go down to the objects and you can start to organize these into light, model, particles, and things like that. And so this is all manually broken down in D5 Render, so you don't have to do any of this yourself. But this is a super easy way if you don't have any layers yet that you can start to toggle and see where everything is. Number six is placing materials. It's super easy. All you have to do is go to the different categories underneath the asset tab. And right now I'm just gonna search for free materials, but you can heart materials that you use quite often, and then you can go into favorites and see them populated there. You can also click on material. Once it loads, you can just drag and click on the model where you wanna place it. It's easy as that. But let's say you already like a material on the model and you wanna replicate that in another area. So what you're gonna to have to do is press I to select the material and then press O for the material paintbrush and then paint that on to the new material. If you're paying attention, you may have noticed I put my glasses on and my eyes are getting super tired. So let's get to the next point, number eight, which is color matching. So you can use the eyedrop tool on the base color to select any color to reference within D5. But what blew my mind when I found this out is you can use the eyedrop tool within D5 Render to select colors outside the D5 window. So for instance, I went to the website Coolers and had a color palette that I wanted to reference. I can bring the eyedropper off the D5 Render screen onto that new website and select that color and it'll change the material within D5 Render. Staying on materials, I'm gonna show you an amazing tool which is Batch Import. So let's say you wanna create a new material and you've downloaded all the PBR textures. Instead of having to manually input each different texture map, you can just click on the batch import within D5 Render. And then when that opens up the file folder, all you have to do is select all of them and then open and D5 Render will manually place all those texture maps. And this is the result. It's super simple. And I honestly love this tool a lot. But let's say you wanna create a custom material 
I'm gonna bring in this wood texture, but since I found it online, I don't have any texture maps for it. So as you probably know, if you're experienced with materials, texture maps make the realism so much better. But I'm gonna use D5 Render's AI texture map tool, which is tip number 10. And what this is gonna do is use that base image I brought in and generate a normal map, a roughness map, an AO map, and you can already see the difference and the increase in quality after I use this tool. But sometimes the textures aren't seamless. So number 11 is allowing me to use the texture I brought in and erase the seams using D5's AI. And it's super simple and it's a small detail, but it makes a huge difference. I'm also gonna use tip number 12, which is HD texture. And that's gonna just increase the quality that much more within D5 Render. The thing I hate is I create a texture in one project and then maybe a couple months down the road, I'm working on another project and I'm like, I really wish I had that texture accessible, but I have to restart the whole process of re-downloading the image and the texture maps and re-importing it, reapplying it. But luckily with D5 Render, you can use tip number 13 and save that material to local. And so since I like this wood material, all you have to do is just save the local. You'll go to the local assets and it'll be under like a custom material. Next, we'll go over tips for assets. Number 14 is replacing existing assets. So instead of deleting an asset and then replacing it, all you have to do is click on it and then do replace asset. It opens up the asset library again, and then you just check mark the asset you wanna replace it with. Obviously, this doesn't really fit very well, so you can also click on it, go to the objects tab on the left-hand side, right-click, and then also select replace from asset. So there's multiple ways to do it. Um, I obviously like this tree a little bit better. So you just have to click the check mark. It's like I'll do different options very quickly. Instead of having to place the same asset over and over again, you can just copy it. It's as simple as holding shift and clicking on the asset and then dragging the directional arrow in the X, Y, or Z coordinate. And if that's not good enough, you can select multiple assets and then hold shift click and it'll copy all of those together. But in addition, you can do asset manipulation for groups of vegetation. So I selected all of these trees and what you can do is randomize the spacing, the scale, as well as the orientation or rotation of these models. So that way it gives you some variation if you're copying and pasting the same exact tree in multiple different areas so that the vegetation doesn't feel repetitive. That brings us to number 17, which is the train paint. And what I want you to focus on is not my poor terrain building skills within D5 because those need a lot of work and I had to smooth it out to just make it look serviceable. But what's super cool is you can add different materials to the terrain. But what makes this 10 times better is that you can scatter assets on a specific material instead of the whole terrain. Let's say you would have put all the trees using the scatter tool on the train that would have crashed your computer but with this new tool it allows you to scatter by material so when i drag in these plants all i have to do is just select a specific material and it'll apply the scatter to that material as you can see here but let's say i don't i feel like that area is maybe a little too small you can paint a little bit more on the train and increase the area that is scattered then you re-click on the scatter tool regenerate it and as you see, quickly repopulates it all. It's a lot simpler than having to place every single individual vegetation. But it also works for trees. As you can see here, I placed a whole bunch of trees, but it's way too dense. But luckily you can edit the scale as well as the density of these assets within the scatter tool. It's pretty dense, but it's still realistic to where there's not just a bundle of trees. But I'm not liking how the trees are starting to be populated with the scatter tool within the building. So I'm gonna use tip number 19 using the detach tool and the coal tool. When you scatter a bunch of assets, it groups them all together. But if you double click on an individual asset, it'll isolate it. From there, you can right click and then detach it from the group and move it around. But you can also use the coal effect within the scatter tool to first click on the scatter and then the building and then it'll separate the trees from the building. Number 20, text to 3D model. 
Now I was just experimenting with a random idea. I'm like, what if there was a pool floaty in this pool? And I was like, wait, there's a tool in D5 that I can create that with. And so I did like a round donut shaped pool floaty just to see what I could get. This was kind of more of a fun exploration. So it generated me four options. Um, once it loaded in, I just clicked on it. It took a couple minutes to load. Then I clicked on it and then dragged it in and there we go. Then you can apply materials and to make it as realistic and fit in with the rest of the scene. Moving on to rendering and lighting. Starting with tip number 21, the rule of thirds. And if you're not familiar with the rule of thirds, it's super easy but very crucial when coming up with the composition of photography, but especially for the renderings in our case. So what it is, is a breakdown of nine grids, basically, three top to bottom and three left to right. And this is just helping you organize the hierarchy of the composition. Now we'll mess with the lens settings using the FOV, the field of view, and the focal length. And this will allow you to either zoom in or zoom out of an image. And these are very simple settings, but have a crucial impact on how you perceive the scale and the composition of your rendering. So let's say you've created an environment within D5 for one of your images. So you go and create another view and you're like trying to create the same exact composition, get the sun in the correct angle, make sure all the lighting settings are perfect. Well, you don't have to do that. You don't have to create a completely new environment for each individual rendering view that you create. All you have to do is copy those settings over between views. It's super easy. And you can also save those as presets in the D5 Studio. So when you come back and do another rendering and you like the lighting from a previous project that you've done, you can bring that in. You can also look through the D5 curated lighting or you can use the d5 curated environment as a resource to find the lighting or the environments that you want to use in your project but let's say you're super picky and just nothing is working but you go to google and you find an image of an atmosphere or a sky that is beautiful well lucky for you you can save that and then bring it in to d5 render using the ai atmosphere match tool and within a couple minutes it'll use all its intuitive settings and adjust the D5 scene to that image that you brought in. If you wanna know the most impactful way to improve the lighting within your rendering, then it's to use HDR skies. Now within D5, they already have a library of HDR skies, which might I say is like a mouthful to say on camera. So you can either use the ones within D5, or I also like to go to a website called Polyhaven, and you can download these skies for free and then import them in to D5 Render. And as you can see, it's super simple to do and the results are instantly applied. But I'm gonna rotate the scene a little bit just to get the lighting that I want. I like the reflection of that sunset onto the windows. Now I'm not really a fan of where the sun position is because it's currently following the HDRI, but you can also customize it so that you can adjust the sun angle and the sun rotation so that it's separate from the HDRI, which gives you more customization, which is the name of the feature, um, to get what you want. But you can also use LUT colors, which stand for lookup table. And basically, this is just like a color palette or color grading that allows you to take these color settings to make a picture look cooler brighter, warmer. I'm sure you're not just using D5 to create one rendering, but multiple. And you know how long some of these renderings can take, so you don't wanna be constantly coming back to check how long each one has progressed. So by using the batch rendering tool, you can select all the renderings that you want to render, and they will do them consecutively. So you don't have to come back after each image has rendered and then start up the next rendering. You can even turn on a setting in D5 that'll save and shut down the program so it's not running while you're asleep. Now we're on to the final features that can only be found in D5's beta tool library. So how you can get there is go to settings, click on preferences, and then click on widgets. We're going to click on the advanced camera tool and the section tool, but there's also some pro widgets, things like 
VR, advanced image rendering, and color grading that if you have the pro version, you can download these beta tools and they're super cool to use. We're first gonna start off with doing picture in picture. And this has a smaller camera in the bottom right, but allows you to also zoom around the scene to find your next camera angle. And finally is the section tool, which allows you to cut a section plane or do a section cube in the D5 model. You can adjust this super easily or you can rotate it. If you don't want to render a plan, you can do a rendered section. You can also adjust the fill color of the section cut, as well as if it's affected by the lighting, the weather, things like that. It's pretty customizable and it's just another great additional feature that D5 has to offer. Let me know if there's any features that I missed and that you think other people should know about. So comment those in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching and welcome to the grind.